In the last episode of the Valencia Career Mode, we signed Spanish center back Pau Torres as well as the regen of Lionel Messi. We saw a positive trend in form for our performance in Champions League, not dropping a single point in the group stage. Hey, what's going on everyone? Flick here. Welcome back to another episode of our FIFA 21 Valencia Career Mode. This is episode number 10, the conclusion to our fifth season and the final episode of this series. We've got a lot to play for as we try to lift our first subware here at Valencia. It's going to be a long shot for us in the league as we currently sit fifth place. Looks like either Barcelona or Atletico Madrid will be running away with the La Liga title, but we've got a few chances in other competitions. Based off her performance last season, we're into the Supercopa semi-final along with Atletico Madrid, Athletic Bilbao, and Barcelona, as well as the Copa de España, which will get underway in January. And then, of course, we have advanced through to the knockout stage of Champions League. If I had to give a preference over which competition I'd like to win, of course, Champions League, I think, would be the crowning achievement here at Valencia. But if we can end this crew mode with at least one trophy, I'd be happy. We certainly got the quality in our starting 11 to find success. We made a lot of improvements to the team in the last episode, signing Messi's regen at the striker position up to a 91 overall. Gonzalez and Gonzalez both on the wings. And then our midfield, absolutely crucial to how we play, setting up our strikers and attackers with lots of goal scoring opportunities. Our defense has been fairly sound over the last few seasons. I would like to make some improvements though. We've got Ferro at the 84 overall, as well as here Troida. So if we can make a transfer in January to boost up the rating a little bit, I think that will help our chances. Along with that, I would like to make a few improvements in terms of squad depth. Our substitutes are fairly low rated. Rodrigo at the 75 overall, Bird at 79. So I'm going to be recalling Musa from his loan at PSG. Unfortunately, we didn't end up getting the loan boost that I was expecting, but Still a decent rating and someone that can definitely serve a substitute role for us. And we will also be releasing a couple of players from the team. This is just to clear up the squad size because we're at the max number of signings. So if we want to promote any players through the Youth Academy or make transfers, this is what we need to do. I do want to take a moment to give a big thanks for all the support shown on this Valencia career mode. It's been a struggle at times, but I'm really glad we're in a position we are right now to hopefully close out the career mode on a good note. Along with that, quite a few of you are excited for the career mode that we will be doing in League 1. Uh, that should be coming in a very short amount of time. I've already looked over the comments for teams that you'd like to see. I've got it narrowed down and I'm pretty sure I know what club we'll be managing next. It'd mean a lot if you could leave a like on the video, show support for this series, as well as subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet, so you can stay notified when these uploads go live. We've already talked a little bit about where we want to improve our team, and this is the budget that we've got to work with. 244 million in our transfer budget. I really have no concerns for how much we have moving forward with this being the final episode of the series. I figure we may as well spend as much as we have available. Nordu Mukiele is going to be the transfer target for this episode. A right back, center back slash right mid, so a very versatile player, exactly what we need here at Valencia. And most crucially, he is 87 rated. To go along with that, Leipzig are not in Champions League this season. So I'm going to count this as a realistic transfer, even though they are a club with a lot of high potential players. I figure he's willing to make this move to Spain as he does manage to sign for 111.3 million. That is his release clause, agreeing to a pretty big contract. It's going to be a crucial squad role on a three-year deal worth 100 grand a week and a release clause set to 202.9 million. It's pretty much our choice where we want to feature him in our squad. Both Ferro and Hirtroida are 84 rated. I think though, Mukiele would be best served as a center back for us. That pace, defending, and physical statistics are absolutely incredible. And I think that partnership with Pau Torres is going to be even better than what we have right now. So we're going to be sticking that center back dead plan on him to convert his position. No change to his rating, but we'll keep him on the balanced growth plan. And that should see all the statistics go up a little bit over time. With that signing complete, I figure we may as well focus on a couple of our board objectives. Brand exposure wise, we need to sign three players from South America. We've already completed one of those transfers by bringing in Messi's regen at the beginning of the season with him being from Argentina. So I took a look at the free agents. I find this is the easiest way to get this objective done because you don't have to actually pay anything for the transfer. So we look for some high potential Brazilian talent, 16 to 21 years old. And fortunately, we've got a couple of players coming through. Afonso Sauerbeck is a CDM slash center mid, 21 years old with low high work rates. And as we did sign him up, he is showing great potential. Probably will never feature in this Valencia Curva, but he gets us a little bit closer to completing our objective. I think a pretty similar future for Ladero Araujo, a CDM slash center back, 71 overall, slightly younger at 18 years old. 
and showing great potential as well. So a couple of promising Brazilian talents. Maybe if we end up simulating this crew mode to future seasons for a, a separate video, we can see how they end up developing. But for the time being, that'll help boost up our manager rating and probably give us a little bit more success for the simulated fixtures. Not too many transfers going out of the club in this episode. Uh, Dordovich going to Wolfsburger AC for 1.9 mil and Sibile going to Racing Club for 1.4 mil. Outside of that, it's just the free agent deals as well as the Mukiele transfer. With this being our final scouting network period of six months, I thought we would revisit some of the most popular countries here at Valencia. Of course, Spain for six months looking for any type of player. We're also going to Argentina for six months looking for a technically gifted player and closing things out with Portugal for six months looking for a physically strong talent. There's a lot of different scenarios that could have gone down for us in January, starting with the Super Cup fixture in the semifinals against Barcelona. Again, they get the better of us. Could have been a bigger result with Martial missing a penalty in the 71st minute, but Barcelona will be advancing to the final, so that knocks out one of our chances of lifting silverware. Fortunately, though, we can turn our attention to the Copa de España, and finally, we had some all right fixtures in the round of 32, matching up against Hirona, winning that match 1-0 courtesy of a Pedro Gonzalez goal in the 77th minute. Real Batista are our mid-table side in La Liga, so again, I would count this as a good fixture. We ended up winning this result 2-0. Again, Gonzalez getting on the score sheet. This is where the challenges start factoring in, though. Real Madrid in the quarterfinals. Wasn't sure how we would do, but we continue with the simulations, and it ends up working for us as the match goes into extra time, but it's Soler who gets a goal in the 106th minute, leading us to a 2-1 result on a very even match. And I knew it had to happen. The storyline with us and Barcelona continues as we match up against them in the semifinal. Keep in mind, this is a two-leg fixture, so we'll be playing both a home and away match. The away match ended in a nil-nil draw. Absolutely take that so that we can actually play the home match and hopefully get a favorable result. That is exactly where we'll pick up the gameplay for today's episode. And this is the squad that will lead us Mukiele is still an 87 rating, but now getting the maximum boost to his sharpness as a result of the position change. This is a balanced team. We're in great form, and hopefully we can get this result against Barcelona and continue that momentum in other competitions like Champions League. It's the semifinal of the Copa de España where we begin continuing this storyline rivalry with Barcelona. And just as a reminder, this is the second leg with the first match ending in a nil-nil draw. Everything to play for in this match. While Barcelona might have the slight advantage in terms of the matches that we've played against each other, we now have Messi's regen. Correa, maybe he'll be the difference maker. Without question, one of the players that's had the biggest impact on this Valencia team is Gonzalvez. He's only been around for about a season, but he's stacked up a lot of goals and assists. Hopefully that can continue in this match and we can get the result advancing to the final of the Copa de España. A few good chances early on in this one, including this effort dragged just wide from Gonzalez. And one more chance in the 45th minute as we look to get on a counterattack. It's a breakaway for Rochic, but the ref is having none of it, calling for halftime. A solid first half, though, by all accords, especially on the defensive side of things. I would say that's an area that we struggled against Barcelona in the past. I think the last time we played them conceding four or five goals. So nice to see Xiaomei is able to maintain his clean sheet here as we try to score from a counterattack. But Ter Stegen very quick to come off his line. Really not a lot working for us. So we make what our typical substitution is against Barcelona. Bringing on Mark Roca at the left center mid position. He scored a lot of late winners for us and go ahead goals. And I'm hoping this will continue in this match. Xiaomei making a good save again on his near post. And the ball bouncing around the box off of a Barca corner kick. Another save from Yame as he looks to get on a counter attack, distributing it perfectly right to the corner. And Gonzalez able to run onto it. Three Barcelona defenders and none of our attackers inside the box. So he's got to go solo here. Ter Stegen again doing well to come off his line. But in the 86th minute, we're trying to make some late magic happen. Cray with the back heel, Roca with the space, and it's a far post finish to put us 1-0 ahead. Every time that we've won against Barcelona, it's basically been in the same fashion. Roca making that run from the midfield, and it's a cross goal effort to give us a lead. Perhaps not the flashiest signing that we've made in this career mode, but certainly one that's made a huge impact as it looks like we'll be advancing to the final as we work out our tactics and look to lift our first silverware in season five of the save. It certainly wasn't a match with a lot of chances from either side, but we made the most of our one shot on target 
And as far as the other leg was concerned, it's Sevilla that we'll be playing against as they won 4-1 to on aggregate against Osasuna. We're going to be switching between the Copa de España and Champions League throughout this episode, turning our attention to the round of 16 fixture. A difficult opponent with Manchester United, but one that I still think that we can win against. They have a solid side, but not the best one that I've seen over the course of all my saves in FIFA 21. The simulated fixture was pretty good. 2-2 result, but two crucial away goals. Recently, we've been playing very well defensively at home, and if we can get another good defensive result and at least a draw in this one, we should be advancing to the quarterfinals. It may be a campaign to remember this season for Correa, but in my opinion, for these gameplay fixtures, there's no one better than Rojas, as he gives us the 1-0 advantage just 12 minutes into the match. Doesn't matter if he's playing center forward or center midfield. He finds a way to get involved in the goal scoring and a beautiful finesse shot tucked to the corner here exactly how we wanted to start this match and it was nearly double trouble another good turn from rojas this time on his right foot going just wide the three-star weak foot is the only thing that lets him down sometimes but even that doesn't play too much of a role it may have been an eventful first few minutes but since then not a whole lot happened as we're all the way into the second half and the 57th minute a good block from the manchester united defender as he keeps things 1-0. Still not exactly in a position where I think we can definitely go through. One more goal should seal it. But until then, we need to make sure we're playing to our best. As we get a little bit of fortune on our side, Gonzalez has the initial effort blocked, but it falls right back to him. Not the best of efforts, but it's enough to find the back of the net, give us that two goal cushion, and also that sense of security that even if United manage to score two, the worst that can happen is the match goes to extra time. A few substitutions late in the match, we'll see Musa make an appearance and in exactly the way that he scored a lot of his goals, gets put in a goal scoring position. But unfortunately the sharpness is coming into play a little bit, hasn't featured quite as much for us. And as a result, isn't at his best, but it's all right. He's still a great impact sub, and I think he can continue to get in goal scoring positions as Maratza brings one back for United. Not sure why he's going with this celebration when they need another goal to force extra time. Maybe that'll be their downfall. As we get into the final minutes of this one, we need to make sure we're hanging on to possession and not giving United any free chances. If the right opportunity comes up, we will, of course, take that third goal. Evan Bird to score it. And again, a little bit of fortune on our side. I think all of the bad luck we've had in this save so far does make up for it, though. A great result as we continue our defensive dominance at home. And we've knocked out one of the toughest sides in the competition. Hopefully, our path forward will be a little bit easier. Some interesting fixtures in the quarterfinals of Champions League. It's always nice to see a team like Benfica make it to this stage as it's not often in career mode you see a team outside of the top five leagues make it this far but we will be focusing our attention on Lazio a club that we of course are very familiar with we played against them in the group stage this season and as long as history repeats itself we should have no problem we also managed to win the away leg 1-0 securing this result in a dominant fashion 61% of possession and also seven shots compared to Lazio zero you can never truly know how things are going to go though one bad result in Champions League and you can find yourselves out of the competition we do get off to a good start. Rojas setting up Soler. He's missed his last few chances in this sort of position, but he goes back to his previous ways that we saw in maybe season two, season three, and he buries this effort across goal. And I think one thing that I've noticed in the knockout stage of Champions League is that you need to make the most of your chances, both in the United fixture as well as this one. Not a whole lot of efforts for either side. We're into the second half as we continue our good momentum, this time it's going to be Correa with a good fake shot to get inside the box, nearly forcing a penalty, but a spectacular run. And had that been a few more inches to the right, that would have been an incredible goal. We'll get another chance with Correa, though, in the 63rd minute. He's got more pace than all of these Lazio defenders. Does he have the finishing ability? No, it's a good save by the keeper on his near post, just getting a glove to it and pushing that effort wide of the post. Finally, a chance for our opposition in the 74th. It's a chance play through and some quick passing. Unfortunately, finishing was not their strong suit in this one. As we try to seal things in the 90th minute, it's a simple pass across. And in front of goal, Korea is not going to be missing from there. For the most part, it's the play of our attackers that's going to be highlighted and encouraged. But the only reason that we're in this sort of spot is the performance of our defense. A clean sheet is always going to put us in an advantageous position. 
as we're through to the semi-final of Champions League. Immediately following our success in Champions League, we've got the final of the Copa de España. Taking a look at our form in April, you can see we've won every single match. I think it sums up this season. We're just hitting form at the right time. Sevilla are a side that we've seen plenty of throughout the course of this career mode. It's been interesting to see how their squad has progressed since season one. Going from a side that has consistently performed in Europa League to now one that can arguably qualify for Champions League on a consistent basis and reach the later stages of competitions like the Copa de España. You could argue that they've had an easier path to the final, certainly beating some of the league opponents, but they haven't had to match up against teams like Real Madrid and Barcelona like we have. Soler has been in great form in this episode, and he's going to start off our highlights with a good takeaway from Cup Miners in the midfield, setting up Correa, but a good save on Vlaco Dimos's near post. One of the better goalkeepers in career mode, certainly one of the world's best at this stage in the save. So it will be difficult to see if we can score lots of goals past him. But a great through ball played to Correa. He's one on one with the goalkeeper. Options to play it across, and it is none other than Rojas, making that attacking run from the left center mid position, continuing his goal scoring form that he's had in Champions League and sliding this just under Blajo Dimos's right arm. Slightly bad news though, after that goal, Rojas did pick up an injury and will be bringing on Rucka to see out the rest of this match. The positive side of that situation is that it is only a minor injury. He'll be back in five days time. Pushing on to the second half, it's going to be Gonzalez who kicks off these highlights, getting by most of these defenders and just a little bit of pressure did put him off. Another good save from Blajo Dimos who played quite well throughout this fixture. And it's Sevilla who's denied by Hyame. They're still with possession, though. We eventually managed to win that back and try to see out this one in the 77th minute. Maybe one more goal should seal it. What a pass that is from Gonzalez. Just an all-around player that contributes so much to our attack. And it's nice to see Correa, despite the calls for offside from the Sevilla defenders, had the composure to put that one away. At this point in the match, it's basically a celebration. We know we're going to win this fixture. We might as well show off some fancy passes and show what we're capable of here at Valencia. Gonzalez rewarded for his spectacular assist. He'll also add a goal to his tally. And with that, a 3-0 result will see us win the Copa de España, lifting our first trophy here at Valencia. I'll admit I'm slightly surprised it took five seasons for us to pick up our first amount of silverware, but I still think it's an incredible achievement. We've had a difficult road here to the final, but it's unquestionable that the squad we've built over five seasons is one of the best in Spain, if not all of Europe. And I'm proud that we were able to accomplish this with a realism lens in terms of the transfers, developing some good storylines along the way. But that is certainly not it as far as the gameplay in this episode goes. We will be focusing now on Champions League, picking things up in the semi-final, and you guessed it, it's going to be Barcelona that we'll need to defeat once again if we want to lift some more silverware. Not too many changes in terms of their starting 11, but a little bit of rotation for the positioning. Chilwell featuring at the left center back position instead of left back. I'm not sure if this is because they're missing out on one of their players due to an injury or suspension, because we actually are missing one of our most talented players in the midfield, Rachic will be suffering a one-match ban because of a red card. He's a big reason why our defense has been defensively sound. With how good Barcelona's attack is, it's going to make for an interesting match. But all things to play for as the away leg ended in a 1-1 result. We could see another draw, but I think chances are the winner of this match will be advancing to the next round. Given our situation, it's going to be crucial for us to put our foot on the gas and try to score as many goals as possible. Straight after kickoff, it's a great opportunity. Korea with a good change of pace except he will be denied twice by the German goalkeeper. That didn't stop us though. Five minutes in, it's Korean Rojas this time going for the chipped effort. Everything looked good about this, except it did not find the back of the net. We're still within 10 minutes as it's a takeaway from Rojas, plays it out wide to Gonzalez. He's going to return the favor and it finally is 1-0 for us. 2-1 on aggregate as we look to score some more against this strong Barcelona side. I think a big reason why we saw success early on is that we played against Barcelona so many times throughout this career mode. Earlier on, they got the better of us, but now that we know their strategy, we know how to score goals. And Gonzalez, you might recall in the last episode, we had a very similar effort to this one, except it got blocked by the opposition. This time, it's going to be clean through on goal, doubling our lead and really giving us a good chance to advance to the final of Champions League. We're keeping pace of creating chances about every 10 minutes. This time, it's Gonzalez 
who goes with the cross goal effort saved initially by Ter Stegen, but we're going to keep hold of possession and just look for the right opportunity. It is Jose Gaia who on his right foot, it does not matter one bit. A lot of precision there from the shot. And although he's a left back, he's got very well balanced statistics. There were even some shouts of us featuring him in the midfield at some point in this career mode. Well, he's going to get his goal here. Taking a look at the replay. This is a technically sound goal creating enough space to shoot with his weak foot. And there's no way Ter Stegen will be stopping that. Arguably one of the best 45 minutes we've played throughout this career mode, just the single shot for Barcelona compared to our 10 shots and seven on target. Keep in mind, we're also hanging on to the majority of possession, but a change at the beginning of the second half, Correa being brought off, Bird being brought on just for that extra bit of pace and stamina. The Canadian has certainly been one of our better youth academy players in this save, and I think given a couple more seasons, could have found his way into the starting 11. It's just a lack of experience and inconsistencies that let him down from time to time. This time, he had the whole goal to shoot from, and he decided to go right at Tristegan. Fortunately, we had such a big lead already at this point that it didn't make a difference on the match. Well, the Coleman side will go down, and we're through to the final of the UEFA Champions League. I thought about featuring one or two La Liga matches in this episode, but given our performances in the Copa de España as well as Champions League, I'm just at a limit for how many matches I can showcase. This final league fixture will be important though, because if we take a look at the league table, a lot of different situations could go down just a point or two separating each of the teams in the top four. We'll see how our league season finishes at the end of the episode recap. But for now, our attention will, of course, go on the Champions League final against Liverpool. The first time that we'll see them featured in this save. They haven't really made a whole lot of transfers, though. A few additions to their defense. But outside of that, they've got some aging players in their front three with Mani and Sala well into their 30s. Still a very good side, though. And if they've gotten this far in Champions League, they, of course, will be some difficult opposition. But it comes down to this one trophy already secured for us here at Valencia. This will be the final match that we showcase in this career mode. Let's try to end it on a high note. If you've ever done a Liverpool crew mode and use their default tactics or played against them, you know that they play a very high line defensively. That is going to lead to a lot of counterattacking opportunities. Of course, you need to get through Virgil van Dijk first, though, as he makes a big block there. Gonzalez from the left wing is going to try to go in the near post. Good save from Alisson. Nearly rebounded back to us, but it does eventually fall in Liverpool's hands. Our main guy, though, Rojas, is basically inducted into our career mode Hall of Fame with how much he has contributed to this save. He's going to give us the advantage in the Champions League final, the combination of pace and composure. You know he's going to put that effort away. It's a chance for us to make it to this time Gaia playing through Rojas, Fabinho on the chase. But I think Rojas does have the advantage in terms of sprint speed, a good job from Alisson to close down that gap and make a big stop to keep the Reds in this match. Nervy moments here towards the end of the first half, Ahiame doing well to come off his line. That'll take us into the halftime break and the next batch of highlights. We're only about five minutes into play resumed and already we're going to create another goal scoring chance. It's Rojas making the attacking run and it just worked out perfectly against this Liverpool defense with such a high line, a cheeky ball roll to create slightly more space and finally, we have doubled our lead, increasing the chances of us, of course, winning, but also forcing Liverpool to play more attacking and let us create more counters. That can either be a good thing or a bad thing if you can withstand the pressure. It's going to be a chance in the 71st minute. Some good composure from our defense to nod that back to Hyalme, but it's going to be one final chance. Hyalme has redeemed himself from any inconsistent form he's had in this crew mode. He's let up a lot of near post goals, but he played exceptional in this Champions League final. One last takeaway will result in the ref blowing his whistle. And with that, we'll be closing out the career mode with a win and another trophy. This Valencia save has had its ups and downs, but I think that is a fair representation about the club situation. A historic side in Spain that at the minute is struggling, but I think the future is certainly bright for them. Of course, some of the original players like Gaia and Soler are going to be crucial to their success in the future, just like they were in this career mode. And with the right combination of transfers, Valencia's future might have a different story. But for now, let's celebrate this win. We've also made some changes so that Soler as our vice captain will get a chance to lift a trophy for us an incredible performance by the entire squad considering this was our first season in champions league and with that we'll get into our final end of season recap seeing where we completed our la liga season and see who the individual standout performances were what a season this was for us at valencia a champions league victory to close out the save and i think crew mode is all about catching form at the right time season five truly has been a success for us as we also managed to finish 
second in La Liga, Atletico Madrid repeating as champions. But if you're interested in how some of the other results went around the league, Granada, Leganes, and Sporting will be sent down to the second division. The champion of that league was Las Palmas, Elche also seeing promotion. Obviously, a big reason that we were successful this year was Messi's region, Valentin Correa. I found it incredible that we could dev plan his position change to a striker and immediately see a boost to his rating. Ended up going plus six in his overall, but we're more concerned about the goals for now as he netted 35 from 58 appearances. 20 goals from 55 for Rojas, not bad from the midfield, and Gonzalez 14 goals from 56. Correa did also finish as the top scorer in La Liga, 27 goals from 38 appearances, and he was the only player for us to feature in the top 15. Soler is one of the few original Valencia players that had been part of our starting 11 for the entirety of this career mode. Great to see that he's contributing in the assist category as both him and Gonzalez had 16 assists and Rojas with 12 from 55. A few more appearances for us in the top 15 as Gonzalez had the most assists in the league, 12 assists from 37. We did have Soler with eight assists from 32 in sixth place. And also surprised to see Rocic. He finished all the way in eighth with eight assists from 36. So he contributed a lot to our La Liga total. Yame may have been one of the biggest surprises for us in this Valencia save. It was a controversial decision for us to start him over Silson at the beginning because Silson had the higher rating, but I think it ended up playing in our favor because Yame saw consistent growth from year to year, ending at an 87 overall, managing 32 clean sheets across all competitions. Quite a few of those were actually in Champions League, roughly half of his total appearances. But as far as La Liga is concerned, he ended up having the most clean sheets in the league. Again, roughly half his appearances were resulting in clean sheets. We'll spend a little bit of time talking about top growth. We had four total players ending with a plus six in their overall, some of which were sent out on loan, like Raiko Garcia, one of the high potential goalkeepers that we recently signed. Diego Gutierrez, a center attacking mid from Spain, out on loan at Boa Vista in Portugal. Of course, we know Ivan Gonzalez for all the appearances he made for us in the first team. Again, a big reason why he saw this plus six to his rating was the dead plan position change to the right wing from center forward. Same could be said for Korea, actually the opposite right wing to striker. Unfortunately, because we approached our max squad size, we couldn't promote any players from our youth academy over the course of the season. But regardless, this is how our youth academy will end. Maldonado is a center attacking mid from Colombia, our top talent at a 67 overall. And again, if you are interested in me simulating this Valencia save a couple of seasons, maybe I can do a live stream or a separate video on that topic specifically, but we'll look at all the squad in general and some of our statistics across all competitions. Not many of our players are above the age of 30, really just Xiaomei and maybe one or two other players. I think if we talk on general terms, I'm really happy with the progress we made with this Valencia team. We kept things fairly realistic by transfer listing some of our top players when we didn't end up meeting objectives like reaching Champions League and still ending up with an incredible squad. Board objectives were also a massive success for us this season, mostly because the board actually gave us a bit of leniency, not giving us a youth development objective, which is quite difficult to do, especially when you're in the fifth season and trying to compete in a Champions League competitions as well as the league, but brand exposure, we met both of these 20 wins in the league and signing three players from South America. Financially, we met this mark of signing three crucial players and making a profit of 125 million. We finished just short of completing both of our domestic success objectives, finishing second in the league, but finally winning the Copa de España. And then of course, continentally, we over exceeded this objective of reaching the final of Champions League. We went on to win that competition. As we close the book on Valencia, this is the final squad that we've managed to develop. The fact that we've hit mostly upper 80s and a few lower 90s for our players is absolutely incredible. And I've had a lot of fun with this save, even if we had some struggles along the way, but I'm even more looking forward to our next career mode. I really feel like we've hit the stride as far as what direction we want to go for these saves in order to keep things interesting from season to season. And again, I want to give a massive thank you for all the support you guys show on these episodes. It's amazing how far the channel has come in FIFA 21, and I'm going to be doing my best to keep things going. But if you did enjoy this Valencia save, make sure you leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. But until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you all again soon.